Thank you so much for tuning in to Learn Linux TV, your source for Linux-related fun and learning. I love producing Linux-related content for you, but I can't do it alone. If the content on this channel has been helpful to you, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And one of the ways that you could do that is by becoming a patron, which will give you access to exclusive perks. Also, be sure to check out my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server 4th Edition. And while you're here, be sure to subscribe. New content is uploaded each and every week. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get started with today's video. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what we're going to do is check out wget. wget is especially useful because on a Linux server, we don't always have a graphical user environment. And as a result of that, it might not always be easy to directly download something from the internet to the server. But what the wget command allows us to do is, well, exactly that. Download something from the internet directly to our server, even without a GUI. So in this video, what I'm going to do is show you guys some examples of the wget command in action. But before we get into that, I want to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video, Linode. Linode is a Linux-focused cloud server provider, and using their platform, you could actually set up your very own cloud Linux server in minutes. You could use Linode's platform to set up your own blog, perhaps a Nextcloud server, a Minecraft server. But if you're not feeling particularly creative today, then you can actually use their platform to spin up a Linux instance that you can use while going through the tutorials in this series. In fact, they have all kinds of distributions available, so if it's covered on Learn Linux TV, then you could probably find it on Linode. And best of all, cloud servers on Linode's platform are very inexpensive. You can get started with a Linux instance for just $5 a month, but it's even more affordable because if you use the URL that's on the screen right now, then you'll be able to set up your brand new Linode account with $100 in credit, and you can fit quite a few Linux servers within that credit. The credit is actually good for 60 days, and I highly recommend you check out Linode's platform because they are awesome. So definitely check out Linode's platform. I highly recommend it, and I really appreciate their continued sponsorship of Learn Linux TV. Anyway, the wget command is awesome, and I can't wait to show you guys, so let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first thing that we should do is make sure that wget is actually installed. And to do that, we'll type which and then wget, just like this. And if you see output like this, that means that wget is actually installed. On my end, I'm actually running on Fedora. So if I didn't have wget installed, then what I could do is run sudo dnf install and then wget, just like that. Or if I'm using a different package manager, then what I could do is use that package manager. And regardless of your distro, the package should be named as wget, like you see right here. So go ahead and install that with your package manager if you don't already have wget on your system. Anyway, wget is installed and it's ready to go. So let's see some examples. One very popular use case for wget is to download an archive that contains an application that we want to install. Granted, not every application that you might want to run on your server is downloadable via wget, but it is a very popular use case. When you want to deploy an application on your server, the process usually starts by downloading the application that we intend on installing. Now, not every application that you might want to run on your server is downloadable this way, but many of them are. So what I'm going to do is show you the process of downloading WordPress. WordPress is a super popular platform for blogging and publishing web content, but we're not actually going to be setting up a WordPress server in this particular video, but perhaps that's something that I might cover in the future. So the first thing that we'll need is the URL. I don't know about you, but on my end, I don't personally have the download URL for WordPress memorized. So what we'll need to do is open up a browser. And then what we'll do is go to wordpress.org. And then we have a button right here that says Get WordPress. So I'll click on that. Anyway, after I clicked on the Get WordPress button, it brought me right here to the download page. So what I'll do is scroll down. And right here, we have the download link. But instead of left clicking on this like I would normally do, what I'm going to do instead is right click on it. And then I'm going to click right here where it says Copy Link. Now, depending on your browser, the verbiage here might be different, but it should be more or less the same. So I'll click on that right here, and let's go back to the terminal. And what we'll do is type wget, 
And then right here, I'll paste in the URL, and there it is. So if this works, what should happen is wget should actually fetch the zip file that's at this URL right here, which just so happens to be the installation files that are required for a WordPress installation. So I'll press Enter. And wow, look at that. It downloaded very quickly. We have the download file right here. And to prove that, you can see that we have the latest.zip file. And if the name is any indication, that's the latest version of WordPress. But anyway, we were able to use wget to download something from the internet. And that completes our first example. So now we know the basic usage of wget. We were able to use it to download WordPress, the installation files for WordPress that are in this zip file. And that's the end of the first example. Now, just like most commands when it comes to Linux, there's other options that we could use with wget to customize it or actually tweak the behavior of wget. So let's see some additional examples. And the first one is going to be the dash capital O option. So if I recall the previous command, which is right here, what I could do is add the dash capital O option right here. And what this allows me to do is actually change the name of the downloaded file. So if I wanted to call it wp.zip, for example, I could certainly do that because the dash O option allows us to set a custom name for the file. So I'll press Enter. And we can see both of the files right here, and they are the exact same size. We can see the file size right here for the first one that we've downloaded. And then you'll notice for wp.zip, it's the same file size because, well, they are the same file. So as you can see, when we use the dash capital O option, that allows us to set the name. So I was able to override the name, the default name of latest.zip at the server side and then name it wp.zip here on the local server. Now, to be fair, I could just accept the default name when I go to use wget and then rename it later, but that is legitimately another step. So while I could simply rename the file manually, it might make sense for you, especially if you're scripting this, to have the name as something specific all in one command rather than waste a line in a script file or something like that. We could set the name like you see here. So for the next example, what I'm going to do is show you how you can actually choose the location for the downloaded file as well. By default, wget will download whatever it is you're downloading to your current working directory. But if you want to redirect that file somewhere else, you can absolutely do that. And that's exactly what I'll show you right now. So in order to set a custom path for the downloaded file, what we'll do is we'll use the dash capital P option like you see right here. And then right after that, we'll give it a custom path. I'll just save mine in my downloads directory here. But on your server, you might have a download directory somewhere else. Just go ahead and update your path accordingly if you're following along with me. But we have the dash capital P option. We have a path. And then we need to tell wget what in particular we want to download, which again is going to be WordPress because, well, why not use that as an example again? I already have the URL, so it's easy to do. And that was at wordpress.org and then latest.zip. So I'll press enter. And then we'll list the storage. And as you can see right there in my downloads directory, we have the latest.zip file that we grabbed from the WordPress server. And it's ready to go right there in my downloads directory. Now, so far, the WordPress example, the latest.zip file, that's a very small file and it downloads extremely quickly. But what if you're downloading something that's quite large and for some reason you lose network connection? If you have a slower connection, that might be a little painful to start all over again, especially if the file is extremely large. So what I'm going to do right now is actually use a different file as an example. And this is actually another reason why wget is often used. We'll sometimes use it to download ISO files for Linux distributions. Off camera, I went ahead and grabbed the URL for the ISO file for Alma Linux from one of the mirrors on the official website. So I'll paste that right here. Now this file is going to be on the larger side, so it's going to take a bit of time for this to download. Now my internet connection is actually reasonably fast, so it might not take all that long, but it's definitely going to take longer than that WordPress file. So what I'll do is open up a new tab, and then in the original tab, I'll start the download, and then once the download starts, I'll close the tab to simulate an interrupted download, and then we'll see how we can go ahead and resume the download. So as you can see, it's downloading right now. This is the official ISO file for Alma Linux. 
And as an aside, I have a video that I've uploaded recently that shows you the installation process for Alma Linux. So definitely check that one out if you're interested. But anyway, back to wget. I have the download going right here, and let's go ahead and cancel it. I'm just going to close this tab. And it's gone. So the download was interrupted, and I would rather not start over. So what can we do? Well, here's the command right here that we used to at least attempt the download earlier. So what I'm going to do is add the dash C option. And if this is actually successful, then what that should allow us to do is resume the download right where we left off. And I didn't even try this ahead of time off camera or anything like that. So I don't even know if the Alma Linux ISO file, if that web server that's serving this file actually supports the ability to resume. So I'm going to find out along with you guys whether or not this works. Anyway, I'll press enter. Let's see. And it looks like it's working. Wow. So I was able to continue the download without starting from scratch. And that's awesome. Now, I already have all my Linux downloaded, so I'm not going to wait for this to finish. I'm going to cancel it this time, and I won't resume it. We see that it was actually working, so I think that's good enough for now. And then we can move on to the next example. So next, what I'll show you how to do is actually use an input file with wget. So for example, I'll use nano. You could use whatever text editor you would like. And what we'll do is we'll create a text file. I'll just call mine fetchlist.txt. And I'll paste the ISO download link right here as the first item in this file. So there we have the ISO file, the download link for the ISO file that I grabbed from the Alma Linux website. And in addition to that, I'll add another URL right here. Let's add wordpress.org latest.zip. And actually, we should add the S right there for that one. And I have two URLs right there that I want to grab basically the two files that we've been working with so far. So I'll save the file and exit out. And we have the fetch list right there. So what I'm going to do is type wget and then dash i for input file. And I'll give it the text file that we've just created. And if this works, what it should do is actually download everything that was contained inside that file. So I won't cancel it this time because I actually do want to see this continue. I want to see it continue and download the WordPress file as well, which should be downloaded right after this one right here is finished. And that'll confirm that our fetch list is actually working. And check that out. It actually downloaded the WordPress installation file right after it finished with the Alma Linux file. Since we had two URLs in the text file that I used for this example, that makes sense. So now, as you can see, you can actually define URLs right in a text file, and then you can point that text file right to wget, and wget will take care of downloading those files right to your server. So this tutorial was definitely one of the simpler tutorials in the series, and that makes sense. wget is actually a very simple command. There's really not a whole lot to it. We use it to download files from the internet, and it's very useful for that purpose, but when it comes to that, there's basically a few options that we can give wget to control, you know, where it saves the file, what it names the file, and things like that. And it's as simple as that. So even though wget is a very simple command, I definitely wanted to cover it in this series because it's an essential command, which means it fits the Linux Essential series quite well. wget is one of those commands that I highly recommend that you commit to memory, but thankfully, it's not really all that hard to do so because there's only, you know, several options that you'd probably use anyway. But even with that, wget is very popular and is something that you're going to use as a Linux administrator quite a bit. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again very soon.